25. All right, setting our timer. And I don't believe we're going to go for 25 minutes, but we'll just set it for that. All right, so we are back. Had to adjust my light here a little bit as it's getting a little more stormy outside. Thank you all for jumping right back in. Thank you for sharing the broadcast and inviting specific people or inviting your followers all together. We are looking at the book. I'll put that right there. Anything You Want by Derek Seavers, which is 40 Lessons for a New Kind of Entrepreneur. Most of you in here, if you own a business, you are probably under the label of new kind of entrepreneur. There are so many ways, as we know now, to start a business. It doesn't have to be the traditional way. And so that is what Derek Seavers is talking about. So um, he decided to give 40 tips. And as you can see, the book is really, really thin. Very, very thin. And he said he did it in a way where... You could read this whole book in an hour and get in an hour what he learned in 10 years. So that was his goal. He wanted to be able to empower people to get out there and start their business. But he, he didn't want you to wait around 10 years to do it. <laughs> he wanted to give you enough empowerment in one hour that he learned out of 10 years. And this is the owner of um, CD Baby. He used to own CD Baby. And um, he's got his margin of sales at the beginning of the book. And he, he charts how he started with one employee and he was making a um, million dollars monthly. And he got all the way up to making $4 million a month before he sold the business. So the man knows what he's talking about. And... Um, you know, he's not just giving you some la-la land tips. <laughs> His name is Derek Seavers. And the book is called Anything You Want. And the, and the tips are very, very good. And so I'm going to share two of them with you today, and then we are going to close out. One of his tips is start now, no funding needed. Start now, no funding needed. He says, watch out when anyone, including you, says they want to do something big, but they can't until they raise the money. It usually means the person is more in love with the idea of being big, big, big than actually doing something useful. $4 million a month. And this is the gentleman who started CD Baby. Now, if you know anything about the music business, because I use CD Baby now, there are other companies out that do what CD Baby does, but CD Baby was the first company that started doing it because nobody was willing. He wanted to get some music out, and nobody was willing to distribute his music because he was an independent artist. So what he did was he basically opened the door for independent artists to not have to go through a major record label in order to distribute their music. And that was huge because, you know, if you know the music business, there are only certain um, music companies like Motown, Sony, you know, the big hitters that would, you know, sign a person and then they would, you know, get them to work on an album for a couple of years. Then they would distribute. So what he did, yes, he was a pioneer. He enabled more musicians to be able to get their music out professionally and start selling their own product. So what he did was he broke down um, the the gulf, right, that was between the the musician and the major companies. So he opened up the door for people who would never probably get a record deal with a major company to be able to sell their music anyway. Um, kind of what is like what has happened with Tidal. If y'all are familiar with the streaming service Tidal and how Jay-Z bought them out and now there are certain artists that will only stream their music on Tidal so that they can get 
the revenue that they're supposed to be getting. So it's forcing the other streaming platforms like Spotify, Pandora, etc., to kind of think about how little money that they're giving to artists. Like I got my first, <laughs> I got my first uh, distribution monies from live streaming my music, and it was pennies, literally pennies on the dollar. And so, what they're doing is they are opening up channels and avenues for people to not be, how can I put it, not be taken advantage of by these systems who make all the money off of your art and you get the pennies on the dollar. So that's what he did. But he says it usually means the person is more in love with the idea of being big, big, big than with actually doing something useful. For an idea to get big, 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 it has to be useful. Somebody type useful on the screen. And being useful doesn't need funding. If you want to be useful, you can always start now with only 1% of what you have in your grand vision. Exactly. So many musicians had record sales but made no money. Yes, because their companies were getting most of it. So we want to be useful. And like he said, you can have a grand vision, but if you start with what you have now, not a lot of hope, not a whole lot of funding or no funding is needed. He said you'll be ahead of the rest of the people because you actually started while others are waiting for the finish line to magically appear at the starting line. For example, let's say you have a vision of making an international chain of enlightened modern schools okay and i actually have a vision of making a school and i know i've written the plan for it i know what the cost is going to be i know the kind of staff i want i know the kind of curriculum that i want to have for it um but i don't know if i want to do it in, in the united states or if i want to do it where i want to move permanently <laughs> Because I don't believe the United States is my eternal permanent destination. So he says, you picture it as a huge world-changing organization with hundreds of employees, dozens of offices, and expensive technology. But instead of waiting for that, <laughs> oh, I'm leaving. I need to leave the United States. I can't stay here. Not with the stuff we're doing. We're doing too much harm to people of color. For me to want to stay here in the United States. That's just a sidebar. But instead of waiting for that, you start by teaching somebody something this week. Ding, ding, ding. So instead of waiting for a school, you start by teaching someone something every week. Mm -hmm. Find someone who will receive what you have to teach or who will pay to learn something and meet them and begin. Now, because I do private tutoring, I get emails all the time from people who will ask, who ask me, will I come and tutor? Um, because of my schedule for the summer, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing tutoring on the regular during the summer so I don't want to make any commitments to do that. But as a private tutor, I like to travel to the student. I like to meet that student in either a library or I like to meet them at their home with their parents or their guardian present. And I like to teach them right in their setting because it makes the student feel more comfortable. So again, this is something that I can do anywhere. I could do it anywhere in the world. I've gotten an offer to teach overseas and they were willing to pay me really good money. <laughs> but guess what? I'm not in a I'm not in a space right now where I would want to spend a year away from my husband teaching somebody else's children. So, I had to make a decision this is a very good offer. Who could I pass this offer on to that might be in a position to take advantage of this offer? Maybe somebody who is single. 
maybe somebody who is um, <laughs> apostle. <laughs> Listen, so even though I was given the offer, it didn't mean that I necessarily had to take it, but I could pass the offer on to somebody who could, right? I couldn't, I didn't have to be selfish. I just passed the offer on to somebody who is younger, who has time on their hands, um, who likes, who wants to travel, who has a passport so they could take advantage of that opportunity. All right. <laughs> so he says, it will be nothing but you, a student and a notebook, and you'll be in business and you can grow it from there. So what he's in essence, pointing out is a lot of times people are waiting for all of these bells and whistles in order to get their business started when they can just start. And the bells and whistles you can add as you go. He says, if you want to make a movie recommendation service, start by telling friends to call you for movie recommendations. Exactly. You can always start virtually or homeschoolers, which I have. I've actually worked with several homeschoolers, and that is my next plan is to possibly do a virtual school online for K through 12 because I have entirely too much curriculum in me to not be teaching it to K through 12. When you find a movie your friends like, they buy you a drink. Keep track of what you recommended and how your friends liked it and improve from there. If you want to start a new airline, Next time you're at the airport when a flight is canceled, tell everyone at the gate that you'll lease a small plane to fly to their destination if they will split the costs. <laughs> Thank you, Apostle. This is how Richard Branson started Virgin Atlantic Airways. Starting small puts 100% of your energy into actually solving real problems for real people. It gives you a stronger foundation to grow from. It eliminates the friction of big infrastructure and gets right to the point. And it will let you change your plan as you're working closely with those first customers who tell you what they really need. Since I had already built the website for my own CD, the first version of CD Baby took me only a few days to make and it did almost nothing. It was a, a list of a few CDs, each with a buy now button. Clicking the button would put the CD in your cart and ask you for your info. When you entered your information, the site would email the information to me. That's it. The first year, that's all my site did, and that's all it needed to do in order to be profitable. I spent only $500 to start my business. The first month, I earned back $300. But the second month, I made $700 and it's been profitable every month since. So no, your idea doesn't need funding to start. You also don't need an MBA, all right, to start your business. All right, so that was his first tip. Get started. That's what he's telling you. Stop, stop waiting to accumulate several thousands of dollars before you get a souped up website and a souped up business card and a souped up this and a souped up that. Start with the materials, the raw materials that you have. And as he said, the more you do it and the more you're working with your clients, you can be tweaking your business then because then you're finding out what people actually need so that when you do make a website, you're not putting things on your website that people don't even need. But that's a whole other business scope. Just a whole bunch of stuff on your website that people don't need. They're not even reading it. You gotta make your website simple. About you, products and services, contact. That's it. <laughs> Who are you? What do you offer? How do, I, how do I get in contact with you? And is there a buy button? That's it. I look at people's websites. They got eight different tabs. I'm already lost. I'm lost. <laughs> I can't find your shirts. I can't find your CDs. I can't find your books. 
it's just a whole bunch of stuff. So, um, you know, just keep it simple. About you. Who are you? What do you have to offer? How can I buy it? And how can I get in touch with you? That's it. Four buttons, people. Four buttons. All right, here's his next business tip. <clears throat> Proudly exclude people. Proudly exclude people. He says, you know you can't please everyone, right? But notice that most businesses try to be everything to everybody. Exactly. There's no call to action. And they wonder why they can't get people's attention. You need to confidently exclude people and proudly say what you're not. By doing so, you will win the hearts of people you want. I learned this lesson the hard way. And as he's saying this, I do want to add this in there. Somebody put, don't go against your core values. Somebody write that on the screen. Don't go against your core values. Okay, so my editing business. I have a company policy where I edit Christian, inspirational, uplifting material. Don't go against your core values. All right? That has always been my company policy since I started in 2010. At one point, a couple years back, <clears throat> I was kind of needing some cash. I was kind of down on my, I needed some cash. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I had bills to pay and I needed some cash. And so a gentleman approached me with a project and he was offering really good money to edit this project. It was on um, a movie that he was pitching because I also edit screenplays as well. It was a movie that he was getting ready to pitch. And, you know, he gave me the synopsis as it being this religious story. So I was like, okay, you know, so got the contract together, signed the contract. And he, he gave me the um, script because it was like for a, almost like a TV series. So it was several hundreds of pages. When I tell you, I read... I started reading after I got into his script, maybe about a hundred pages. I realized I should not have taken his project. Let's just say, <laughs> let's just say the script was a cross between X-Men, Da Vinci Code, I mean, it was very sci-fi-ish, but it had a religious element to it. But there was some really, really, really dark, satanic activity in his storyline. Now, if you're a prophetic person, you know <laughs> that you cannot be reading everything because then you start having visuals, you start having mental pictures. And so my husband had to pray me through this project because there was times I could not sleep after reading this person's script. But I had already signed the contract. So I say that to say I went back to the person and I did tell them, you know, you weren't really honest about what your script entailed. And I was, I was very frank with them. I said, you weren't really honest about what your script entailed. And now I'm having nightmares editing your work. So when he came back and he was like, oh, this is so great. This is so wonderful. I want you to edit part two and three. <laughs> I was like, brother, you're going to have to find another editor for part two and three. So once my contract was over, I did not, I chose not to, I opted out of doing part two and three. 
I'm not going to say that his script was not good. I'm going to say that the content of his script went against my core values. Every customer is not for you. So when he says proudly exclude people, proudly exclude people and say, here is what I do. Here's what I am about. Here is what I'm not about. And so one thing I learned from that lesson, normally I would ask for um, a preview of a person's script or a preview of a person's manuscript for their book and read over the preview to see if I was actually, you know, if I could actually work with it or do something. I didn't do that this time. And so I learned my lesson. If I'm going to do, if I'm going to work on your work in terms of editing, I want to make sure that I am working on something that I agree with morally. That's just me. Some people, some companies, they don't care. They'll edit whatever it is. They'll edit it. I don't do that. So you have to know what your standard is and you have to say, I'm not going to go against my standard for money. But I tell you, I learned he got me. He did. He got me because he was not honest about what was in his script, but I had already signed a contract with him. <laughs> so he says, you need to confidently exclude people and proudly say what you're not. By doing so, you will win the hearts of the people you want. The Hotel Cafe, a folk and rock music venue in Los Angeles, is a no-talking club. There are big signs that read, no talking during performances. Performers are encouraged to stop the show if someone is talking and let the person know that they can go to any other club in town to talk over the music. This is the one place in LA where you can sit and really listen to the music, which of course makes it the most popular music venue in town. When CD Baby got popular, I would get calls from record labels wanting to feature their newest, hottest acts on our site. And I would tell them, nope, they're not allowed here. The record label guys would say, huh? What do you mean not allowed? You're a record store. We're a record label. I would say you can sell anywhere else. This is a place for independent artists only. Musicians who, cho who chose not to sign their rights over to a corporation. To make sure these musicians get the maximum exposure they deserve, no major label acts are allowed on the site. It is a big world. You can loudly leave out 99% of it. Have the confidence to know that when your target 1% hears you, excluding the other 99%, the people in that 1% will come to you because you've shown how much you value them. So the lesson there, be willing to exclude people. Know your target audience and stick to it. Don't be like me and be tricked. Make sure you understand <laughs> the client that you're working with. It does happen sometimes, even to the best of us. Some of us get tricked by people, you know, proposing and pretending to be one thing, and then they turn out to be something else. But, um, you know, don't be tricked. So, believe it or not, we are finished right in time. It has been a great Friday, a great Daring Dialogues. Thank you all so much for your time and attention. I hope that I said something that was helpful if you are in business. I hope you will take into consideration what has been said. Remember, if you have a business idea, don't wait. Get started now. See how you can get that business jump started even without funding. And make sure that your business is useful. If it's useful to someone, you're going to find customers. You're going to be able to find clientele. All right. Thank you all so much for your time and attention. And attention. Take care and have a great weekend. God bless.